Hey guys, just a quick disclaimer before we jump into this. I found this video on one of my memory cards unedited and I figured I would still throw it out there for you for that good old content. Uh, but it was filmed back in February, well before lockdowns and quarantines. Not that that really has anything to do with the content of the video, but if I seem more youthful and full of life, that's probably why. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. I'm your host, Ashley, and today we are going to talk about a very interesting and unique and fairly modern baseball invention, and that is the opener. And in honor of it being a discussion about the opener, how could I resist wearing a Rays shirt? So, just had to get that out of the way, because of course the opener came into popularity or mass hatred, depending on how you look at it, starting in the 2018 season when the Tampa Bay Rays deployed it with some regularity. But I think it's important that we kind of discuss what the opener is before getting into much detail about the Rays' use of it, and whether or not it's something we're gonna see with any consistency going into new coming, new and upcoming seasons. And I'm so sorry if you can hear a vacuum cleaner, because I just cannot help it. So I know we've discussed the role of the closer previously when we kind of talked about position players. The opener is a very unique take on how baseball is typically run. So closer is a very standard role and has been for decades. The closer is typically gonna come on in your last inning of baseball just to close things out, close things out, hence the closer. But more frequently than not in baseball games, your starting pitcher is expected to go the bulk of innings throughout your game. At a minimum, you want your starter to be able to go five innings, up to seven and even eight if they're able to keep their pitch count low. So to utilize a player in the first inning or two that isn't intended to go the length of the game is a unique and very unpopular take on how baseball is supposed to be run. The idea of it is actually very clever though, because the opener will come on, pitch either an inning or two, and then be gone for somebody to come in and take kind of the bulk middle innings. What this does is it lets you get through the first rotation of your batting lineup against your opponent and then shakes things up entirely. So they're not able to kind of become used to that starting pitcher. And this is important because with starting pitching, you tend to see that batters do better either the second or third time after seeing that pitcher in a game. So yeah, they may not be able to hit very well against him the first at bat they have, but by the third at that bat they see against that same pitcher, they sort of figured out his routines, maybe if he's tipping pitches, which will be its own video, but it basically means he's giving some sort of an indication that he's going to throw a certain pitch, whether or not that's where he holds his glove or a way that he holds his stance. Sometimes batters can get a sense of what pitch is coming. And if they're able to read that through three different at bats, then they have a better opportunity to hit well against that pitcher come the third time they see him. So with the opener, you're actually taking away that sort of predictive measurement because by the time a batter's second at bat comes around there's already a new pitcher on the mound and if that second pitcher the kind of middle innings pitcher is only going to be up for one or two times seeing that same batter they're never quite able to find the rhythm and therefore take advantage of what they are seeing that would exist if they were just seeing one pitcher through seven innings so we sort of saw modern use of the opener start up in the 2018 season with the Rays and on May 19th of that year in a game against the Angels the Rays brought in their closer, Sergio Romo, who's a guy used to pitching one or two innings tops, but instead of having him come in at the end of the game, they started the game with him. And this was because in that 2018 season, the Rays had gone through just a monstrous number of starting pitcher injuries. Their intent during that season had been to start the rotation with five strong, typical starting pitchers. But when two of those pitchers ended up being lost to injury for the whole season, or at least the bulk of the season, they kind of had a very limited options of what they could do at that point. They could either go out before the season started and pick up one of the free agent pitchers who might be on the market. The Rays are fairly notorious for not spending money when they don't have to, and they ended up coming up with an alternative alternative solution. And that was the opener. Instead of going out and paying somebody new to take over the standard starting pitcher role, they decided to really utilize their bullpen. In a lot of situations, this wouldn't have gone well for the team because not everybody really 
bulks out that bullpen and they definitely don't build it with the mindset of using those pitchers at the beginning of a game. But the Rays were really smart about this and they went through and they found pitchers that would be ideal for the first inning or two and then they could use those long relief pitchers or perhaps young players who weren't yet ready to take on a standard starting pitcher role and fit them in in the middle of games so they could pitch innings three through seven and then rely on more standard end of game bullpen pitchers to wrap things up. And what you ended up seeing then were these bullpen games where you were using, instead of a standard starting pitcher, an array of different relief pitchers. And it's sort of fascinating how well it worked for them. I don't know that it would work for every team. And a lot of teams have sort of picked it up from that point to try to use it when they've maybe lost a pitcher to injury, or they're not really sure how to best utilize their pitching rotations. And with mixed results, some teams are finding it works very well for them, whereas others are like, mm, we tried this for a game and it's not going to work for us. But the race continue to use it throughout the 2019 season as well and it got them all the way to the postseason. We actually ended up seeing bullpen games taking place in the American League Division Series in 2019 which is just crazy and they did well, which is even crazier. The Rays may not have advanced beyond the ALDS, but they still managed to put Justin Verlander on the ropes. And that's saying something about the quality A of their bullpen, but also of the way they learned to utilize this technique. This wasn't the first time in history that somebody had been used in an opener role. The first recorded use of an opener is actually in game seven of the 1924 World Series, when the Washington Senators used a pitcher to face only two batters. And the reason they did this is that they wanted to kind of trick the opposing team into setting a batting lineup with that pitcher in mind and then locking them into that right-handed heavy batting lineup. So that's a bit tricky, of course. A little bit like cheaty, I guess, but you know, it worked for them. And in the 90s, we saw a couple teams using the same kind of rotational trick specifically towards the postseason. We saw teams like the Pirates, like the Athletics, using pitchers in positions where they would be pulled very shortly after entering the game. But it definitely wasn't until the 2018 season that the opener A got its proper name and B really saw widespread use by any major league team. And initially people were really against it. Like there was a lot of outcry about how it was an unfair ploy and it devalued the starting pitcher and how it was going to change the way teams looked at their pitching staff and how starting pitchers would start to lose value on the open market. And I don't think that that's ultimately going to end up being the case. I think what it will have proved to do and will continue to do for teams is give them an opportunity to continue to stay competitive even when they have injured starting pitchers. But I don't think anything is ever going to erase the value of a guy who can start your game and go seven innings and throw you know, 110 pitches and still have quality. Like the opener isn't going to erase the value for a player like Garrett Cole, which we can see because he got a monstrous offseason contract. And it's certainly never going to do away with your Justin Verlanders and your Clayton Kershaws, but it is going to make it so that teams don't need to go out mid-season and perhaps pick up a starting pitcher if they know they have the quality and depth of a bullpen that can carry a bullpen day. And ultimately that is a really good way to make use of every member of your team and your pitching staff in really unique and interesting ways. So in case it's not obvious, I'm a fan of the opener. I think it's a really unique kind of structure. And uh, in my first time ever being able to interview players, I asked Johnny Venters about it when he was with the Rays and he ultimately went on to actually open a game a few weeks later. It didn't go that great for him, but it was still really neat to be able to have that conversation with pitchers and see how they felt about the opportunity to be used in a different role. And I think it, it really was a very unique moment in baseball history. So I hope that helps you guys kind of get a better sense of the opener and how teams are utilizing those bullpen days. Uh, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up down below. Uh, were you pro or con opener when it started being used? How do you feel about it now? Do you care? Uh, leave a comment down below. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to be notified every Tuesday and Saturday when new episodes go live. And of course, you can always follow me on social media where I'm at 90 feet from home on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So until next time, guys, have an awesome day. Bye!